What's up everybody, this is your boy Thirsty Jack and this is a special installment of Thirsty for Wrestling. And I'm gonna give uh, my condolence to uh, to China, um, RIP to China. I, w I was a big fan of China during her days when she was part when she partnered with Hunter Townsley and I remember she was ragged all the shit out of Melina at the time and she she was one of my favorite women wrestlers of all time and I've been saying that all along. I say she she belong in the Hall of Fame. Uh, I remember I would keep on saying that from the people and they start laughing. And now people now she passed. Unfortunately, people want to say, "Oh, she deserved to be the Hall of Fame." So for me, as a, as a hardcore diehard China fan, she deserved to be Hall of Fame. So R.I.P. to China, one of the greatest divas of all time, much better than that damn Medusa and everybody else. She's my number one. Top diva of all time. So, the game plan I'm going to show you right now is a WWE 2K16, a UFC 2, a knockout mode, and I think a championship mode. And the topic I'm going to talk about is a uh, Finn Balor and what will happen next because uh, this uh, this week uh, we just find out that Samoa Joe is a new NXT champion uh, through a house show and. Um, in some state, I forgot the name of it. And Finn Balor lost the title to Samoa Joe. And there was a video that pops up saying that uh, once he quiet down people after he walks out, he told me, you know, be quiet and I see you guys on Monday. And for past days, we've seen uh, uh, Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson, they debut on Monday against the Usos. So if you put two two together, Finn Balor debut on Monday, Call and Doc be there on Monday as well. And my best guess is we will see the debut of all three of them reunited or they're building up towards to it. And I think we will see the Balor Club or the Bull or Bulletproof Balor Club. One one of them two because they can't use the Bullet Club uh, the Bullet Club. Because that's owned by New Japan Pro Wrestling, and there's two ways I can see this happening: is we will see, you know, Finn Balor, AJ Styles, Doc, uh, Doc Gallows, and Carl Anderson, all four together become the group of the Balor Club, or the Bulletproof, or Impact Club, something. It will be, it will be, it will be a stable. Cause this is the first time that AJ Style and Finn Balor team up because I remember uh, Finn Balor left uh, Bullet Club, known as uh, Press Devitt, he left Bullet Club and AJ Style steps in as a leader. It become totally changed. And with this situation, I can see all four of them work together because they made the Bullet Club popular. You know, Finn Balor, um, Press Devitt, he made the Bullet, he made the Bullet Club popular. But when AJ Style step in, it, they he made it even more popular than ever. You know, you see everybody rocking the Bullet Club, you know, parody shirts. Even I remember with Cesaro and Tessa wore the, the Brass Ring Club shirt. <clears throat> Along with uh, Adam Rose. I remember that. That was like last year or so. Because after um, this man had that bullshit podcast with Stone Cold, you know, talking about that, uh, grabbing, grabbing the Brass Ring. But for this one, I can see that happening. Oh, I can see Finn Balor, uh, Docs, and Carl attack AJ Styles and bring up the story from the New Japan, how uh, how AJ Styles took over the Bullet Club. So there's so many directions they could do with Finn Balor and the Bullet Club, or Balor Club, but likely we'll see AJ Styles, Finn Balor, and Doc, and, and Carl work together. Uh, when when we're going to see that, my best bet, it won't be payback. It'll be too soon. But my ideal month or the ideal um, setup will have to be in summer because don't forget uh, it's, it's a playoff season. I wish I'm gonna bring it up in my next topic uh, about Shimmer Man. But the perfect timing, in my opinion, the perfect timing for the Baller Club to come in or debut is most likely in the summer. And um, why I say that in the summer, because you gotta think about it. That's where all you know the big stuff happening during that time, and try to keep the rest of the thing going. And back I was saying, 
the best time to do it for the Battle Cup to be united is no other than July. Known as the money in the bank. Why July? It's the same exact month as one of the most popular stables of all time debut. You know it, I know it, it's happening in WCW, the New World Order. It happened in July, during the time of the Bash at the Beach. And after that, it changed the wrestling scene. I can see that happening the same thing with the WWE, and the perfect time to do it. Now, the way I would put it, I would put either Finn Balor or AJ Styles in a Money in the Bank match, and have one of these two win it, and cash it in at the same night, attacking the champion most likely be Roman Reign and once they do that the crowd will go nuts because right now people don't like Roman Reign still they don't like him even though he, Roman Reign keep on saying I'm not a good guy I'm not a bad guy I'm just the guy I am the guy but people don't want to see that shit <laughs> you know I think people still give more respect for for Dean Ambrose than Roman Reign right now at this moment but I think the perfect time to the whole group coming together is at the Money in the Bank. Um, seem, I would rather see Finn Balor cash it in and become the champion and have Doc and Gallows team up and help him out. And that would boost the, the club. The Bulletproof Club. Hmm, that's, not, that's, not, that's not a bad idea. But anyway, yeah, the Bulletproof Club. That's how I would name it. The Bulletproof Club or the Balor Club. But that's how I would have done it. I think it would be awesome. I think Finn Balor would move up to the main roster because... Once you lose the NXT Championship, you will not get that belt back because NXT, known the history of never ever capturing, um, never capturing a title twice, not even one, not even you know close to it. But once you lose the title, you move to a main roster. That's all it is. But yeah, they are a, a brand, but they are going through the developmental system and push you to a main roster. So pretty much they like the developmental brand. Acting like a big brand, then a brand acting like a growing brand. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, I think I think it'd be dope to see Finn Balor on Raw, and I think it would keep the interest of it. Now, the next to- the next topic I will discuss is Shane McMahon. Um, so far, Shane McMahon running Raw, or should I say Raw and SmackDown, is doing a good ass job because I think the show become more interesting now, and they did in a perfect timing because you know why the reason why Shane Man comes back because only one word and one word only two leagues is doing it right now is the playoff because for the past years when the playoffs comes along they lose interest of what's going on in WWE or SmackDown they would more pay they would pay more attention to NXL or NBA and that's the truth you know you can't you can't deny it so they had to. I'm pretty much sure. I'm pretty sure they had to bring back Shane McMahon, because um, if if Shane McMahon wasn't there, I'm pretty sure that John Cena would be there to wrestle the Undertaker at the time. But if that happened, then Raw will go back to their normal self. But I guess Shane may come back and fight Undertaker, and we know the stipulation of it. Um, Undertaker win. Shane may won't come back. If Shane may win, he will run the WWE, and we all see what happened. Undertaker wins, and Shane runs Raw after after WrestleMania, and which is kind of a little bit odd, but okay. The first time they did it, and then they come back again because of what the so-called social media love it so much, and which I sort of believe that, but they just do it for a storyline because in every case, then all the stuff we've been saying through social media, we will see the bigger change right before the Shaman Man happen, and. Now that Shane McMahon, I, I gotta feel that Shane McMahon will, will stick around for a good while, for a good long time, after the playoff season is over. Most likely, the NBA playoff season is over. But once the playoff season, when, uh, once the playoff series is over, I think Shane McMahon will leave, and we're going right back to the same old, old shit previous. Because you think about it, if Shane McMahon, if Shane McMahon would have come back, he would have come back during fast lane. That's that's the way I would have seen it, cause why in the way you would come back like midway or beginning of WrestleMania season, or should I say midway of WrestleMania season? This toss that in midway, because it feel like it's like a last minute and put together and bam, you get yourself a Hell in a match. And we know the Hell in a match was pretty okay, well okay, pretty good, but 
I feel like they just doing that just to 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 make resume better. But but Shane may be there. I think Raw was good. We seen you know good stuff. We seen uh, NXT guys comes up, Enzo and Cass, the Vob villains uh, call up, and not only that, we seen like good. We see Raw become interesting. Um, this is the first time we seen it, cause usually we see you know Raw getting a little bit boring and they get you know beaten by by ratings by you know love of hip hop and other stuff. But this right here, it makes you want to stay there and watch it. And we don't have to watch you no know, Gotham the other show, but. And made me stick around and see what's going on with with uh, with Raw and SmackDown, and I can see a lot of interesting thing. And if she, and and this is my bigger thing. If, if Sharon Man decided to stay, I would love to see Sharon Man inject the group. And and this this is my fault. Uh, me and Bees we talked about this uh during the NXT Takeover of Dallas, and me and Bees we thought this this conspiracy if what's well, your man bring back the the, the Bottle Club and help him beat the Undertaker, that would be the perfect way to do it. But it didn't happen. But I thought what well, if your man inject the Bottle Club into the WWE, become like the next NWO. So that's what I'm thinking about. So that's my that's my random thoughts about it. But. But I think I think Shaman is doing a great job of it. I think the show look good. And I hope Shaman do stay around beyond the playoff series and stick around for a good long time until the so-called brand extension rumors and other things happen. And uh, the next topic I want to talk about, I think it's my third topic. Um, something I look over on on podcast, um, fans talk pro wrestling podcast. Uh, they were just, they were just disgusting. Um, is the NXT and the any wrestlers taking over the main roster? And I listened to it, and they get some pretty good points. But the way I see it, pretty much they're not taking over anything. I know it's a, I know that's not kind of pretty shitty, but just the way how 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 they built them up, how they treat them like when we when we look at Enzo Akaz. They they were ready, they were built to be there, but the way they treated NXT on the other hand, they they treat unfairly. They treat like shit to be honest. They were they were the most over team ever. I feel like they treat like shit, and when they come over the main roster, you begin to worry like okay, they made it to the final. Is this their the time to catch a tag team title? That's a big question, and I hope so because. If they can't win a tag team title at NXT, if they can't win a tag team title at WWE, why are they here for? You know what I'm saying? And, and I say this in the past video. People come from, excuse me, people come from NXT and go to a main roster and they never get that opportunity. Like I could put a long list. Like I, you could put up like Naval, Adrian Neville. Who's a former NXT tag team champion and a former NXT world champion, uh, NXT champion? When it comes to the main roster, he barely get a push, and unfortunately, the ankle injury took place and put him to a sideline. But he didn't get that much push. But you look at Kevin Owens, guy who came from Ring of Honor, he was still fresh because they know him as Kevin Steen from Ring of Honor, and they got the uh, the still keep him fresh. Even though he, you know, defeat John Cena time, it was hot. Then you know, lose to Cena, and then after that, then took then took the U.S. tie away from him. But they gave him the Intercontinental Intercontinental Championship strap and have this moment. So that was got kind of pretty good moment for that one. But now, hopefully, hopefully Kevin Owens uh get pushed to the main raw uh, the main event status. And we look at a guy like AJ Styles who come through. I won't say indies, but come from like TNA and New Japan Pro Wrestling. The beginning, it was, it was, to be honest, we were kind of disrespectful. You know, to all he's a rookie, he's this and that, and I'm not blaming on on Chris Jericho. And though I'm pretty sure he got a little bit of some power, that's my thoughts. But the writers and this man got to say so and stuff like that, and how they treat AJ Styles kind of like you know pretty fucked up. You know, AJ Styles should have won at WrestleMania and earned his way to a title shot, and which don't make perfect sense. But now he earned a title shot, it makes you wonder, okay, what they 
forward for AJ Styles. So it's kind of questionable. And then you look at Apollo Crews. And it, you got to say something this one. You know, I know I'm not the only one who, who knows it, but when Apollo Crews come to the ring, I've noticed the crowd was dead as dead as quiet. Um, you could tell the reaction of Apollo Crews. He didn't expect that, but I wish they would push him a little bit different. You know, give a little promo, you know, uh, give a little ad, a promo and stuff, and push him a little bit more so the crowd will, will, will enjoy him more because I think it's like the second time in a row we see, you know, dead silence for Apollo Crews, but a major pop for Enzo and Kaz. So it's like a, a big red warning sign for it. And Sima Zayn, I don't know. He keep on losing now. Like I don't remember he win a, a match, but he keep on losing. He he be on a losing streak, and I hope he wins a, a, a match against Kevin Owens and Payback. And this big question that is they taking over the main roster. They own it, but they're not taking over. If they were, then we will see some major improvement. Um, we we will see that a long time ago. When a couple of guys come up, like uh, and girls, uh, like women, like women division, like Paige and then um, and Sasha Banks and Baker Lynch, but right now they got to sit to the side because Natalia comes up, and pretty much I, I can't say that much about it because NXT they're doing good. Um, Smojo he's the NXT champion, and pretty much you can see him to the main roster very very soon. We reach up the belt. I pretty much know how this. How this shit is gonna be played out, and pretty much they own it. Doesn't mean they get taking over. Um, I say I say it looking good right now, but far as down the road, we don't know. Um, I would say one of these guys will walk away as a champion, but that look a long time because Roman Reigns will remain as a champion. That's what the report said. So that's my thoughts about the whole thing. Um. Pretty much, pretty much, it looked pretty good for WWE uh, as of right now, and and right now it look like uh, this will look a good peer review uh, for Payback. Pretty much, that's all I gotta say about it. But um, like I said, uh, it look it's gonna look shaping up pretty good. Uh, we gonna see Bala Club coming along very very soon, uh, as we expect it as soon as possible. Um. We will see Sharon May if I stick around a little bit longer than after the playoff series because they are doing it because, you know, NBA and NHL playoff. And pretty much, I hope it'll be a big payoff because something big about to happen with Sharon May. And not only that, you know, the NXT and the Indies guys, um, I don't know about who taking over main roster thing, but they is there for a good reason and I hope I see some great success. And hopefully we will see some big change. And not only that, you know, it make you question about NXT. You know, what next for the NXT? Because they about to, they about to lose Finn Balor. I know he's very viable. And make you you know wonder who be the next one to fill up the shoes of Finn Balor because he put in work in NXT. And I'm pretty sure that we got uh, Sasuke Nakamura, uh, Austin Aries. Um, Damn, that's about. No, oh, you got pretty, you got good, some good good guys. Uh, Todd Todd Dillinger's, you know, the perfect ten. I can see him be a major impact player. Um, Manny, he be good. And also, also I like No Way Jose. Uh, I like them guys. But pretty sure that's that's how that's how that's how it's gonna be. And that's all I gotta say from it. And um, I hope you guys uh, enjoy this topic. Um. Uh, don't forget to leave a like button. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Um, there will be more videos come to come very soon. And uh, be more wrestling wrestling topic. And now like that, I will be back for some more videos. So be a lookout. And until then, I see you guys next time. Um, like I said, we lost China, and also we lost uh, in the music world Prince. Um, great legend. Um, one of my all-time favorite movie. One of my favorite movie of all time is Purple Rain. So that's my favorite uh, movie. 
Yeah, great tactic guy, um, legend, icon. We kept. I can't believe we lost both. This, this quickly time. But yeah. But anyway, um, don't forget to leave a like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, also, leave a comment and a feedback about this topic by Shaman Man and WWE uh, main roster and, and uh, excuse me NXT and the Indies guys to get our main rosters and. What else? Um, Finn Balor come to 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 Raw, all main roster. But anyway, till then, I see you guys next time. Bye.